Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, our discussion will be on wireless connectivity, specifically on Zipbee. Okay, there will be a series of discussion. So today will be the part one series discussion of Zipbee. Okay, once the part two is available, okay, I will put under the description. Okay, so please read on the part two to further understand on the topics of Zipbee. Okay, so this is my email. If you have any doubt or question regards on this video, please send me an email. Okay, before I start the discussion of the topic, okay, I would like to say many thanks to, okay, it's not a lot of people, handful of people that show concern. Okay, I'm not throwing the tower yet. Okay, so the reason why I take such a long time for another video is because this is end of the year, okay, it's December 2021. Okay, just in case for those who see my video oh, much later on. So this is end of the year, December 2021. Okay, I'm taking some time off to spend some time with my family. And also I like to have some time doing nothing. So therefore you see that there's a long break before I upload this video. Okay, so thank you so much for handful of you that sent email to send me regards. Okay, so as mentioned, okay, I'm not stopping the discussion on the YouTube yet. Okay, so thank you so much for showing concern for a new P like me that start on a new YouTube video. Okay, so let's start. How does the name of Zigbee actually come about? Okay, the name of Zigbee actually come from this zigzag dance of honey bee. So it's from the zig, the zigzag, the zig, and the honey bee. Therefore, it has this name of Zigbee. Okay, why this Zigbee? It's because a group of engineers, okay, they are trying to eliminate Okay, with this protocol, a bunch of separate and simple organisms that join together to tackle complex tasks. Okay, so honeybee is known that to be very hard work and they always work as a team okay, to resolve a certain issue. Okay, so Zippy, in fact, is all of them actually cooperative, send the message so that finally the coordinator will be able to receive all the message. Okay, so in terms of the topology, okay, I will use the part two to discuss about the topology. Okay, so this is how does the name of ZP come about. It's a group of engineers okay, they hope they can eliminate like a bee working together to form a team to solve a complex task. Okay, so this is some fun fact, how does the ZP name come about. Okay, so ZP is a global standard for wireless connectivity that address the need of low power device. Okay, in the past, okay, every wireless connectivity, the concentration is how to increase the throughput or how to increase the data rate. Okay, Zipbee is the pioneer for wireless connectivity that is emphasized on low power. Okay, instead of concern about data rate, they concern of how much power is required to carry the data. So because of this low power, okay, Zigbee range is short and it has low data rate. However, with short range and low data rate, in fact, it's acceptable because the intention of Zigbee is for IoT application. Okay, Zigbee okay, is also under Wireless Personal Area Network, okay, WPAN, same as Bluetooth. Okay, mainly belongs to only one user. So this is what it means. So it's a personal area network. So ZP is widely used for industry and building management. Okay, for example, it's used to replace human data collection and also some control tasks. Okay, so this is a very quick definition of ZP. Let's go through the characteristics of ZP also. So ZP, okay, like my, I mentioned earlier on, okay, ZP is a pioneer of low power. ZP is also a pioneer to support large numbers of nodes. Okay, in the past, we only have Bluetooth. Okay, we can only have up to seven slaves, for example. Okay, all of them does not have the intention to support large number of nodes. So ZP is also the start how we can support large number of nodes okay, using this wireless connectivity. Okay, ZP has a very low system cost. Okay, so the device of ZP okay, is considered very attractive at that point of time. Okay, so Zippy is intent to operate for a numbers of years on its inexpensive battery. 
Okay, and this basically require very low power. Okay, with low power, okay, we are we can afford for them to work in batteries, and they also require to operate for years. Okay, the link between the nodes will be reliable and secure. Okay, we come to this reliable later on. Okay, because it is able to self configure and self heal. Okay, in case any node break down, okay, they will be able to do self configure and self help. Therefore, the nodes is reliable and also easy to deploy. Okay, because of all these characteristics, okay, we know that the amount of data to be sent typically okay, they are much smaller and basically ZP is considered under a low data rate in terms of wireless connectivity. Okay, so next we're going to talk about ZP operation frequency. Okay, so ZP operation frequency mainly classified into three regions. Okay, one, the ZP channel zero. Okay, so it is using a frequency of 868 megahertz. Okay, the data rate is 20 kilobits per second. Okay, mainly is used for Europe region here. Okay, next, okay, we have this ZP okay, with 10 channel from one all the way to 10, and the frequency is 900 over. Okay, the data rate is twice the amount that used on the previous slide. Okay, the previous slide in the Europe mainly is only 20 kilobits per second. Okay, in North America, okay, ZP is actually using 40 kilobits per second. Okay, one of the reasons why we need to have the num higher numbers of channel is because can you imagine over this region here, okay, there is only one channel frequency that used for ZP. Okay, so imagine in this region here, for example, one small building, okay, there can only be one user. Okay, if not, if there are two users, the frequency will be collide with each other. So therefore, in a particular region, for example, there can only be one user. And because of this, ZP in Europe at that time is not that attractive. Okay, I will come to I will come to this how actually the Europe region moved to another channel number later on. Okay, so because of this problem, okay, like what I have explained earlier on, okay, so instead of one channel, there are 10 channels. Okay, so in short, for example, in a building, okay, you can accommodate. 10 user. Okay, with this and with also higher data rate, okay, this actually spark off the deployment of ZP. Okay, next, okay, we have the rest of the world that is using 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, so over here you can see that there are 16 channel numbers here. Okay, and you can also realize that they have a much larger numbers of data rate. Okay, Europe, okay, like what I mentioned, the earlier one on the Europe. Channel zero, they actually have moved into this region here, okay, which is around the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz, which can have higher numbers of channels of user. Okay, because of this, actually, this is why ZP has a success story to share. Okay, so next I'm going to quickly explain on the ZP architecture here. So from this diagram here, you can see that for ZP, there are mainly three different device classes. Okay, one is a ZP coordinator. So in this ZP architecture, there is only one ZP coordinator. We also have ZP router and also the ZP end device. Okay, so from this diagram here, you can see that okay, these are the end device. Nobody going to talk to the end device. So this is the meaning of end device. No one is talking to the end device. Next, we have this ZP router, which is in blue color. Someone actually talked to the device. Okay, because of this, okay, it's actually classified as a router here. Okay, and then last but not least, like what I mentioned here, okay, the coordinator inside this whole of ZP architecture, there is only one coordinator. Okay, so I will further describe on this ZP architecture on my next video. So thank you so much for your support. Okay, please like and subscribe. Thank you.